My name is Manuel Perez Carrasco, and I'll talk to you today about adversarial variational transfer for semi-supervised domain adaptation. This work was done in collaboration with Guillermo Cabrera and Pablo Protopapas at the University of Concepcion and at Harvard Institute for Applied Computational Sciences. This is the outline for today. First, I want to do an introduction about what domain adaptation is. Then I want to show you necessary background in order to understand my work. After that, I want to talk about uh, what the other methods in the state of the, the art use to um, solve the task and why they fail. And after that, I'm going to show you the proposed methods along with the most important results. So as we know, um, deep learning methods are very good at discovering underlying patterns behind the data, allowing us to perform a lot of different tasks such as classification, regression, detection, etc. But for this model work correctly, we usually need a large amount of data. And to get this amount of annotated data in most of real cases is difficult and time consuming. Also, we assume that train and taste data comes from uh, the same distribution and feature space. That means that if we have data that's uh, from the telescope B and we use a model train on telescope A to, to do a classification, the model is likely to give us incorrect pred prediction for this data. In these cases, we can use uh, domain adaptation in order to generalize a model train on source in order to perform well on target data, uh, allowing us to reduce the number of annotated data for the target domain. So as a review, uh, if we have some data x and some output y, we have a function, uh, there is a function f of x that maps from x to y. And in machine learning or statistical learning, we try to find a function f of x hat that approximates f of x, and neural network is a way to approximate this function. So we can approximate another kind of, kind of function as, for example, uh, f of x equal x, and autoencoders do that using uh, deep neural networks. Autoencoders use a um, compressed representation of the data called latent space and work in two parts. The first part, an encoder encodes the data into this latent representation, while the decoder reconstructs data that look like the real one. Doing that, we try to find a latent space that characterizes the, the most important features of the, of, for, for the data. In variational autoencoders, we try to approximate the same function f of x equal x, but now using a latent space that follows unknown distributions. Hence, we can sample from it. And we usually, for, for this ta task, we usually use some statistical measures such as schoolback leveler divergence plus a reconstruction terms between the input and the output such as mean squared error. So for example, here we can see a latent space of a, of a variational autoencoder trained on MNIST data set and using a normal zero one distribution for the latent space. An important thing to notice here is that samples from the same class are nearby each other. This is because our uh, decoder reconstructs similar data for points that are close in the latent space. And given that objects from the same class are similar each other into, in, the, in the real space, they should be close in the latent space too. Another kind of, kind of important methods are adversarial learning. In adversarial learning, we have a generator uh, that tries to generate data that looks like the real one and a discriminator which tries to distinguish if the data is real or if it was generated by the generator. If we try this model in a minimax fashion, we, we encourage the generator to generate data to fool the discriminator and we encourage the discriminator to not be fooled by the generator and doing that we can capture the distribution of the data. In unsupervised learning uh, and supervised domain adaptation, we deal with the task when no uh, labels are available on the target domain. And current state-of-the-art methods use uh, adversarial learning to perform the task. And they use neural networks as feature extractors and a discriminator distinguishing is if a sample com comes from the source or for the target. And we encourage the feature extractor to generate undistinguishable representation between source and target, finally aligning both distribution. The problem with that is given we don't have labels on target, we can fall in mode collapse or even 
we can flip the classes generating poor representations. Another kind of, me in, in, uh, in supervised domain adaptation, we have some labels on the target, but we don't use the unlabel to perform the task. And a common choice is to create a class-based loss function in which samples from the same class are mapped um, uh, nearby together, and objects from different classes are mapped uh, far each other uh, independently of the domain membership. The problem with that is in cases when we have very few labels on target, it's easy to fall in the overfitting. So with semi-supervised domain adaptation, we can deal with both of aforementioned problems using both label and unlabel data. And in this work, we propose adversarial variational transfer for semi-supervised domain adaptation. The idea is to use a, se a semi-supervised variational autoencoders assuming a, a Gaussian distribution in the latent space in which samples from the same class are mapped into the same Gaussian mixture component in latent space. Then we use a discriminator distinguishing of one, uh, di which distinguish into the, the classes, uh, the class distribution. So we align classes for both source and target uh, for each class independently. And the process operates in three steps. In the first steps, we use the variational autoencoders to map the full label uh, source into their, their Gaussian mixture uh, components in latent space. Uh, using the kullback libler divergence, and we use a classifier to enforce the separation of the, of the, Gauss, the Gaussian mixture component in this latent space. Then we use the model train on source as a prior or as a previous knowledge for the, for the target, and we map label and unlabel samples for and the target into the, the, the right Gaussian mixture component. We expect that using previous train, train uh, network in the source plus the labels that we have in, in, the, in the target, we, the unlabeled samples of the target, target will fall nearby the, the right Gaussian mixture component in this latent space. And an important thing to notice here is that as more labels we have on the target domain, more unlabeled samples will fall in the right Gaussian mixture component. So as more level we have, better we perform in these cases. Finally, uh, we use a discriminator distinguishing if a sample comes from one of the source classes, classes or if it was generated by the target encoder. And doing that, we align each distribution of the classes independently. We test our model in uh, NDigit, which is one of the most uh, used uh, benchmark for this kind of task. Uh, which contain images from MNIST, USPS, and SHVM. We performed three kind of tasks from, U from MNIST to USPS, from USPS to MNIST, and from SHVM to MNIST using one and five la labels per class we, in which we denote one shot and five shot. We showed that uh, using our method, we all perform all the previous state of the art uh, from 0.3 to 1.5% uh, of accuracy. We also test our model in a non-supervised fashion, that's mean no labels on target, and we achieve competitive results among the state of the art, and even we all perform the MNIST to USPS task um, in this case. Finally, um, we try our model in a real case of use, and we classify galaxies by morphologies. We use the cosmic assembly near, infra, infra, near infrared deep extragalactic legacy survey candles as source, which contain images taken in a 1.6 micron filter, and the cluster lensing and supernova survey with Hubble clash, which contain images from 25 different fields and 16 different filters range from the uh, ultraviolet to the near uh, infrared. So we are in present of high, do high domain shift. Uh, labels were provided by Cartel Tepe and Perez Carrasco for candles and clash, distinguishing between spheroids, disk, point sources, irregular and unclassifiable objects. And we show that using just one label per class, we improve the model from 45 to more than 80% of accuracy, and the model keeps improving as more label we add. 
uh, proving the effectiveness of our method uh, in high domain in high domain shifts. Thank you.